Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram Plane Reviews. I'm going to make this series every two weeks from now on, because I am doing scheduling of the videos in general, and I hope you enjoy watching me attempt to land the... Oh crap, I forgot the name of it! Holy crap, the pancake power has a lot of electric charge. From last time, the, the plane... The, the SSTO! Yes, by Calm Llama. And then uh, we'll jump right into... The reviews for this episode. Starting with this monstrosity, which is another SSTO by Calm Llama. It was going to be in the last episode, but the last episode was taking too long, so I had to leave it behind. This is also from, what was it, KSP 1.2.2, and apparently the landing gear have some issues in 1.3, so let's see if those issues have been fixed or if this will be insane in a similar manner. Obviously, we're using a ton of a uh, rapiers. Yeah, rapiers. Gosh, I couldn't remember their name for a moment. Rapier engines to get up high. And then using, of course, a couple of nukes to finish off our orbit. There's probably action groups for shutting down everything, but I don't know what they are. Apparently, okay, switch mode on one for the rapiator, rapiators. Toggle on two. Oh, so we just toggle them on and off, and the nukes don't really have the nukes don't have a toggle. All right, that's fine by me. And apparently, you're supposed to do a shallow ascent with this. Yeah, the landing gear seem a little unhappy. Not super unhappy, but a little unhappy. Apparently, uh, because it's so heavy, you have to uh, start flying at a very shallow altitude and then very slowly increase your altitude over time. I love the sound of those engines. I don't know why it's hitting me right this moment, but it really is. And uh, apparently if you fly it well, you'll have uh, about 4,000 Delta V at LKO to do a round trip to Duna or a flyby of Elu. I've been to Duna once, I swear. Maybe twice. Maybe three times. I've, I've not been to Duna very much, I, I have to be honest. I've just really not done it. Alright, let's see if she pulls up okay on the runway here or not. Uh, I just don't want to have it crash and die. Okay, mm -mm. I didn't pull up. I uh, I let off the. Uh, I let off of it a little too soon. All right, I think we're doing all right. Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and put this at ground altitude just so I can keep an eye on it. We are accelerating very slowly, and of course maintaining a relatively high angle of attack. I suppose we should go ahead and start a turn towards uh, 9 degrees, since we are going to be in the lower atmosphere for a while. Then again, those mountains are right there. Let's not do that. Let's just keep it going at a decent rate. Oh, I'm, I'm just continually overcorrecting my roll here. Don't mind me. Alright, let's... Hmm, that's... Hold on. Sapaps is going to keep it. Not quite, maybe? I don't know, we're about a... Uh, our vertical speed is very minimal. Let's see what... Uh, it's going up slightly. Alright. So we can have this be our extremely shallow starting ascent. Does this have... It has a cargo bay here. wonder what's inside. SAS units, batteries, and an RCS tank, and a couple RTGs. Okay, so that's our... Uh, long-term power system. Long-term power system? I mean, that's that's fairly correct, as well as uh, control authority for us. Using about 11 units per second, slowly increasing, and uh, making the game lag out accidentally, because I forgot that it'll make everything pop up when you hover over those. Alright, of course this thing has a lot more liquid fuel than it has oxidizer, because it's using nukes. And uh, apparently you're supposed to only begin your shallow ascent at about 400 to 500 meters per second. Obviously, uh, we're not quite doing that, but uh, ah! we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, cannot time warp with this design without immediate issues. I have no idea if I'm doing this right. I'm probably not. We are not getting to space today. 
I don't think we... <laughs> uh, I fucked it up! Fucked it up! Fucked it up! Oh, at least the game's humoring us by switching it to orbital mode. <laughs> oh, she I was uh, going to check if I could change the time with the cheats so that we could have sunlight for a landing. But it looks like that's not a... Th Hmm, excuse me. That's not a thing you can do. You can rendezvous? You can set rendezvous? Oh, that's awesome. And uh, we're gonna... Come on. Ro oh, Jesus. The roll is uh, not easy to control. Uh, not gonna worry so much about the speed right now. This thing doesn't want to be level. The, the SAS is overcompensating for me trying to level it out. Okay. There we go. We've got it relatively level. I smell something cooking or burning. Smells more like cooking than burning. That's nice. Uh, let's go ahead and if I switch mode, yeah, they're gonna immediately switch back because they're on automatic. But at some point, they will sw switch back. There we go. All right, let's try to. Whoa! Hello. I didn't sign up for that. Is that one of the ancients? What was that? Shot cone intakes. Nice. Uh, yeah. Kerbal crash system made uh, modified damage happen. Wait, do we have? No. Why are you oxidizer deprived? Deprived. I changed you back to arrow. They just never actually triggered. All right, that's fine. This thing's actually harder to. Never mind. I was gonna say this thing's actually harder to fly with SAS. Uh, but then it started going a bit mad. It's really hard to, to get to control the roll appropriately. There we go. Because if you make too small of an adjustment, the SAS immediately corrects for it, so you can't actually make the adjustment. And if you go ever so slightly past that, uh, it, it over-adjusts like mad. I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, yeah, keep the throttle about there for now. Uh, we're going quite north. What's this? Oh, yeah. So, uh, for some reason I had my F-104 in this save, and I don't know why, so I flew it to the Arctic and then landed it. Yeah. I don't know if it still has the drop tanks on it, like the name says, or if I, uh, broke them on landing. I, I don't remember. But, uh, I guess we could, we could head for it. Um, it is basically in our path. Let's drop the nose a little. We are going to want to come down after all. Dropping the throttle, of course, as well. And I guess we'll see how well this baby lands. Behind the scenes, I'll let you know that I haven't actually landed the other one yet. Actually, you can see that because you can see it's still in orbit. <laughs> I uh, recorded the bit for that, or I recorded the voiceover for that before starting, and then, or at least part of a voiceover for that, and then I decided I would uh, actually record doing it after because I'm smart like that where is the ding oh it's not over the horizon from our perspective uh, it's pretty close I mean we're getting close to it pretty quickly oh yeah it's behind the horizon oh there it is 90 something kilometers away well we're going over a kilometer per second so we're pretty close to being there already of course we are losing our speed quite a bit both because of low throttle and uh dropping in the atmosphere, so obviously that won't continue for forever. Again, controlling the roll on this is a pain in the butt. I wish I had my joystick uh, set up. I imagine I could actually fly this better with the joystick than the keyboards because the controls are so sensitive to roll. And we're starting to accelerate with the throttle on, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it. 60 kilometers out. We're going to want our altitude above the ground. Oh, I do not want this on target mode, though. I want my surface velocity. I'm trying to figure out if we're going to need to engage the uh, engines again. We're starting to... it's starting to be far enough away that it's going to take a while to get there. Let's aim to be at the ground, uh... Three kilometers before? Alright, we've only got about 500 feet of altitude. Less than that now. Let's go ahead and... Deploy the gear, obviously. Raising the nose. Yeah, we have too much speed. 
I intentionally pitch the nose down and back up to try to cut some speed a little bit there if you're unfamiliar with why I might have done that. All right, we're coming down now. Ooh, that's gonna be a hard hit. Uh, they may or may not die. Everything's fine. How far did we get? 2.5 kilometers exactly at the edge of ground loading distance. That's hilarious. Wow, I've accidentally made a huge mark on my, uh, knee. Well, that's that plane. I think the flaw with that was my piloting, though, not the aircraft. And the aircraft was definitely pretty fun to fly, pretty easy to fly, except for the roll being very hard to control because it seems every single control surface is not differentiated, except a few in the very end are actually uh, roll and yaw only, but uh, that's the problem. We need less yaw control because this was a bit ridiculous. I'm guessing these are pitch only. No, they're actually for everything. That's strange. Next, we have the Venus B1 by Matt. Just, just Matt. And it's a long-range heavy bomber inspired by the British V-bombers with three cargo bays. It has bombardier position, whatever that means. I'm guessing... Ah, I see. There's a there's a spot where you can look out and be like, yo, let's drop the bombs now. That's awesome. Uh, three cargo bays, flaps and spoilers, and it has some dummy payloads in it. Hell yeah. And uh, the maximum takeoff weight, it has five dummy bombs, it says. Oh, the... The bay in the front only has one, I'm assuming, then. No, it's not the front bay that only has one. It's the middle bay? That's... that's interesting. Oh. Oh! It's much bigger. <laughs> that's why. Okay. And... that is interesting cowling for the engines. And of course it has flaps, like you said. I can see those flaps are deployed right now, as well as the spoilers are deployed right now. Oh, I love that! I love the aesthetic of using these uh, adjustable ramp intakes as our, uh, as those, like, <sighs> it looks like real plane wings, which I love so much. I love that so much. Uh, there's probably controls on here. Press four to open hatch. I'm guessing that's for the uh, various bomb bays, but uh, there's got to be controls for the spoilers and flaps, right? Uh, bay doors and ladder. Oh, that's to get on board or exit. Uh, there is not. Interesting. So, it turns out that the spoilers are on the brakes action group, and the flaps are on the landing gear. However, it seems that there uh, there's definitely an issue with the controls being inverted, so let me go ahead and... No. Hmm. Well, they're definitely supposed to be on when the brakes are on, not off when the brakes are off. So, that's a slight issue. I guess we'll just turn on the... We'll take off with the spoilers fully deployed and then enable the brakes mid-flight, because I'm sure that'll go well. Uh, hopefully it doesn't have anything else that's... No, yeah, it'll be fine. Oh, dear. I did just flame out two of the engines by stopping. Oh, there goes one for a moment there. So, uh, this thing barely has the intakes to keep these engines running. This is an older design as well again, so that may be part of why. Oh, I love it! I love it! Also, I'm reminded of what Nene said about this cockpit, the Mark II cockpits, looking like, uh, they belong on a British V-bomber, which is what this is, so... Yeah. Makes sense. Alright, we are in the air. Enable brakes to disable the brakes. Fortunately, this thing has the capability to uh, handle that no problem. Uh, oh, the... wait, no, that was just the arrow indicator. I thought for a moment that was a ladder. Uh, speaking of, I'm just... that's F4. I meant to hit 4. <laughs> Lol. Okay, so that opens that, and ah, there's the ladder there. Alright, let's go ahead and say no. That did not retract the ladder. Uh-oh. Wait, there we go. Got it. We're all good. Now, of course, uh, what good would it be to not bomb the KSC, right? Oh, dear. This thing can pull up hard. I don't think bombers are supposed to be quite this maneuverable. But that's okay. We can deal with this. Uh, 
Yeah, no, there's no action group for these, so I'm just going to have to open them myself. Uh, let's go ahead and open this one. Let's open that one. Alright, let's get lined up for the KSC, which is not going to happen very well. We're going to go too fast as well. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, do we have any crew in that in that spot? D <laughs> probably not. Uh, is there anyone in here? Transfer crew. There's no crew in there. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have someone come out of here. What? Move to. Oh, wow. That was easy. All right. Uh, it's kind of too late to bomb on the. I almost told them to exit. Oh shit. Oh, that's beautiful. Cutting the engines to very low throttles so that we can uh, watch those better. Oh! That was beautiful. I love that. All right, we're flying quite low. Actually, let's see how low how low of a speed this thing can fly at. Because apparently it can fly at quite a low speed. Okay, we're starting to fall a little bit. Let's let's arrest that just a little. Actually, pull the gear down. Hey, look at that. Flaps deployed, gear deployed, we can uh, fly at a relatively low speed. I mean, we're still dropping altitude, but still. Alright, let's do something stupid. Turn off the uh, action group. Go for a dive. Right now I'm just rolling. I'm not doing anything else. But the rolling maneuver is taking it into a dive too, which is interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get our relative to ground indicator. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy the landing gear. Disengage the brakes so that we have uh, air brakes in the air. Okay, let's cut. Uh... Okay. Obviously, the spoilers need to be fixed for the modern KSP, but other than that, this is lovely. Obviously, coming in for a landing this far off center line from a weird angle is not the way you would actually land, but that's okay. It's me after all. Just gonna gently touch. Oh, I accidentally pulled up a little too much, brought our rear wheels off, and I can butter the front landing gear touchdown because I can just hold it. Let's go ahead and engage the brakes, and that's gonna bring it down a bit quicker, and wow! <laughs> Brakes are strong on this baby, because damn, that stopped in an instant. What is... No, that's the cargo bay. What do you got? These... They're only at 100%? Wow. Okay. Well, we were going relatively slow. In any case, I absolutely love this plane. And last but not least for today, we have the MI Ignis 3 by Macaw CP. And this is meant to be a... Uh, what do you call it? High-speed, close-range interceptor, which I love the look of. I absolutely love the look of this already, so that's good. That's a good start. Where the hell are the intakes? Are they clipped in somewhere? Oh, uh, oh wait, no. This is the intake. The engine precooler acts as an intake, and it only has the one intake. Unless, oh, this says structural fuselage. It's not actually fuel containing. Uh, that's all it is. Oh, okay. I thought maybe for a moment that the structural fuselage here had the, uh, had other intakes in it, and it seems this bit on the top is also just a structural intake. So, wow, the only fuel on this is right here in the back, and this, which means when it uses up its fuel, okay, it's going to just get more stable as the mass shifts forward. Did you leave the mono... Hey, they didn't leave the monoprop in there. Oh, yes, there's also fuel up here. I didn't think about that. It's actually balanced, I think. Ah, they do the same thing I do. Or at least they have some other manner, of, or the same manner of ensuring that it's taken care of. In any case, let's go ahead and launch it. 
I did intend to go with four planes today, but trying to fly SSTOs properly takes up a lot of time. So this is going to be the last one for today. I'm actually overrunning my normal recording timer for a plane reviews episode since basically in order to keep myself from burning out on these, that's why they're coming every two weeks. And also that's why I do a recording timer uh, of 40 minutes which I've reached, uh, oh, reaching G limit already. Uh, must be a scientist. Oh, an engineer. Okay, same difference. In any case, uh, let's go this way, and let's go fast. Yeah, what was I saying? I don't remember. I guess we're doing a zoom climb. I didn't plan this out, but uh, if I just maintain this, uh, we're just gonna go until we don't have, uh, until we don't have enough atmosphere anymore. So yeah, definitely an interceptor. Let's go ahead and pull extreme G's and cancel the zoom climb, I guess. Because, I mean, I was just going to do a zoom climb, but then I just at the last second was like, nah. So we actually still have perfect control and engine engaged at this altitude, which is pretty amazing. Okay, maybe not the most amazing. Uh, actually, for an engine precooler and a whiplash only at this low of a speed, isn't this kind of amazing? I think normally in most things I've done, this would uh, this would freak out by this point. Oh dear, I should not have increased time warp. Let's uh, let's try and get ourselves lined up relatively well. Okay. No, let's get it more like. Oh dear. There we go. What was I saying? I don't remember. I'm pretty bad at that, but I do love flying this. And uh, it has a decent range. Very good climb ability, obviously. Uh, let's go ahead and get that down to one. Ooh, we are, we are having some instability in the high atmosphere, it looks like. And we've just lost the engine. So... Uh, Technically, that was a very shallow zoom climb. I can actually make this go higher at a cost of speed. Let's see how high we can get. Okay, we're going to space shuttle status now with a uh, high offset from our uh, actual direction of flight. A high angle of attack. That's what I meant to say. You know, I just realized when the center of lift is closer to the center of mass, as you would do for a fighter, then uh, it's not so great in the upper atmosphere. But when it's further back, it's great in the upper atmosphere and not so great on the ground. Well, not always, but you know. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to 30 kilometer. That's pretty nice. 30 kilometers. Of course, we're sacrificing all the speed to do it, but uh, that's okay. I'm just going for silliness. And we've reached our peak at 30,178. Let's go ahead and now do the opposite. Tell it. Let's go down. Oh dear, I hit the wrong controls. That's okay. Just gonna keep doing this. Let's go ahead and time warp it. Just just a bit. And there we go, we have engine power. I'm gonna just turn around, basically. Arresting all our speed in that direction, and let's aim for that random mountain over there. I have no idea where we are on Kerbin. Oh, we're just a bit north, and I'm aiming for that mountain. Nice! Of course, this test would be nothing without a landing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Probably should uh, cut the engine to come in for a landing. Oh, we're at normal speed, it's just we're going that fast. Alright, let's pull up a bit. Oh, oh no. That's not good. Uh, please wake up. Please wake up. Oh, dear. Okay. Had to knock him out again to uh, arrest the uh, vertical speed, but worth it because they're not dead. Gonna try not to kill Kerbals in the plane reviews. I mean, in general, I try not to kill them, but also I tend to um, joke around a lot about doing that. Oh! <laughs> well, shit, that was a bad time to lose consciousness as well. That was probably fine, though. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Alright. 
Let's do other stupid maneuvers. Let's just pull up as hard as we can right now. Yeah, do a little loop and nearly stall at the top of the loop. All right. Uh, 200 meters, we'll pull up. Actually, I pulled up earlier than that, but whatever. And we're going to come in for a gentle landing on this random bit of grass. This has quite narrow, uh, a very narrow wheelbase, so I'm a little concerned about... Eh, oh! Oh! Fe well, fell over in the last second, but otherwise it's fine. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space. Well, we're coming down. That's the good news. Bad news is not exactly in control. If we can regain control, which way is forward? That way. Okay. Now, we need to turn left. Like, really sharply left. That's not the KSC at all. <laughs> I'm dumb. That's the desert launch site. We're, we're near, uh, we're near the, relatively near the, you know what, can I? Let's target that. Yeah. All right. We're not going to make it, just so you know. Actually, if we uh, shut down the main engine and just have the Weasleys. Weasleys? They're not Weasleys. They're fucking turbo whiplashers. Gosh, I got used to the quiet. Oh, we're going to run out of fuel very fast. Meaning we need to gain altitude if we want to make it. Let's try and make that last a little longer. Okay, we got about 1,200 seconds left of fuel. A lot more oxi oxidizer, but we can't do anything with that, really. Not effectively. Alright, let's try to cruise at about this altitude. Well. Let's keep it above 400. Obviously, we're going to burn through our fuel twice as fast now. Did I say 1,200? I meant 300. Whoops. Uh... Okay, yeah, yeah. Our, uh, this line doesn't take into account atmosphere properly. So we're on course, even though visually it almost doesn't look like it. Oh, we've gone below 400. Well, shit. I was trying to maintain that. I guess it's better to just go ahead and burn through our fuel. Well... I say that. It's actually better to go at a lower speed at this point. Just just cut it to 300, level ourselves out a little. Oh dear! Oh dear! Uh, we've lost control without sufficient engine power. That's not good. Alright, we're gonna have to... Oh dear, not go that far. We might not have sufficient engine power at a, at a lower speed, or sufficient control authority at a lower speed. We're doing better at this rate, uh, and we are on target for the launch site slash landing pad, roughly. We've got 80 seconds of fuel, we've got a minute to get there, and uh, we're definitely much more than a minute out. So, we're going to need to cut engine just a little bit more. And we're also going to need to... We are gliding pretty well. Perhaps we can cut engines. No. No, let's keep all the engines running. We could ditch the engines. No, <laughs> that wouldn't help at all. In fact, that'd probably make us flip end over end. Oh dear. Once we lose engine power, if we lose engine power, we need to dive immediately. Because this thing seems to lose control when the speed gets lower. Which is now, actually. 
Yeah, we're gonna need to start diving right now to maintain speed. We might make the coast. We might not. Actually, you know what? It's probably better for us to not make the coast. So let's go ahead and forget the landing site. Just drop down now. No point in putting the gear out. We're having heavy oscillation. Okay, the SAS doesn't know how to fly this anymore. Okay, I'm going to cut the engines now. We're going to need them for our final maneuvers as we get low to the surface. Basically, I'm going to have to engage full throttle and pull up at roughly the same time. And then hope that I can get us at a shallow enough angle as we get closer to the water. Okay. Getting pretty close. Very close. Oh! Very, very... We didn't even destroy the landing gear or the nose cone. That's amazing. Yeah, in real life you'd die because of the waves in the ocean, but KSP water doesn't have waves. Holy shit, that was a stressful landing. Oh my god.